Okay, now I'll give, you, I'll give a definition for mutually singular uh, measures. So we say that the two signed measures are called mutually singular. If we can find a um, set E that is measurable, the E is new now. The E complement is new now. Okay. So basically, what this means is, so you have this. Uh, this is your x, and you have uh, a set E here and uh, an E complement here. And the E is new now means that the E, the mu can only be positive or negative on this part. It could be negative somewhere. This is for mu. And uh, it will be completed now on the other side, on E. And uh, uh, similarly, the new is only, uh, can only take non-zero values so over here. And uh, it has to be zero, uh, or how it be, has to be now on the e complement. So in this case, we call this new and the mu mutually singular. Uh, the notation is similar as a perpendicular. Okay, so we denote this like this. Okay, so they basically mean that they are they don't interfere each other. Um, they have their own support. Okay. Now I'll give the final uh, uh, theorem that is uh, the main purpose of this section. Uh, it's the Jordan decomposition theorem. So the purpose here is to show that uh, for any signed measure, we can decompose it into two positive measures. Uh, one, they are perpendicular to each other, and the, the signed measure is the difference of the two. Okay, it's like we uh, separate a function. We have a function f, and then we write it as f plus minus f minus. Uh, now we just have a signed measure nu, and we want to write it as this. And that these two sets are perpendicular to each other. Or mutually singular to each other. So that's our purpose right now. So that's the purpose, uh, as we said, we want to decompose a signed measure into two positive measures, or just measures. Uh, when we say measures, it just means a positive measure by default. So we can decompose it into two uh, measures, such that these two measures are uh, mutually singular to each other. And also, uh, the mu is just the difference of these two positive measures, okay? Uh, and then also this, Matter, this decomposition is unique uh, in the sense that we'll see later that if you have another pair of such decomposition, then for example, you have another pair like this. Then we can show that for any set E, the nu plus of E is equal to the mu plus of E. And similarly, nu minus E will be equal to uh, nu mi mu minus of E. 
Okay, that's the per that's the uh, that's by the sense we that's the sense word we, uh, we mean by uh, by uniqueness. Okay, we'll see that soon later. Okay, so the proof is not difficult uh, based on the Han decomposition theorem uh, we have earlier. We know that um, for this assigned measure, we can do a decomposition of the set X such that it can be separated into two uh, disjoint sets, and the one is uh, one set is new positive, and the other side is new negative. Okay? So we let X to be separated or to be decomposed into uh, these two sets on decomposition. Of this set new of this sign matter new. And remember that this decomposition is not unique. We can find another pair of sets here. Uh, but the, the if we find another one, we know that these two their symmetric difference will be a new now, and these two will also have will also be new now. Okay, symmetric difference of these two sets is also new now. Okay, so the decomposition is not unique, but we will see that it doesn't affect. Uh, a factor or choice of the uh, the new plus and new minus. Okay, so as I said here, that the p is new positive and the n is new negative. All right. Okay, so uh, now we're going to find out what is new plus new minus would be. So let's for any Set E will set this measure, we define this measure to be the measure of mu on E in the intersection of E and P. And I'm also going to define the new minus to be the negative of new E intersection of E and N. And then we can show that they're both positive, or they're both uh, positive measures. The reason is, uh, we know that P is new positive, so the any subset of it has a positive measure in new. So this must have a, uh, this must be positive. And similarly, since this N is negative, it's new negative, so this must be a uh, negative or non-positive non number. So this together must be a non-negative number. Okay, so this both of these two are positive measures. Okay, means that they can only take their value must be greater than or equal to zero for any subset for any set E. All right. Uh, and on the other hand, we also know that um, for any. Uh, E in N, we know the measure of E, a new plus of E is equal to the new of E intersection of E and P. But remember that E is a subset of N, and N it, uh, does not overlap with P, with P. So this is just the new of empty set. So we know this must be equal to zero. All right? So that means the for any subset E of n, the new plus takes the value zero. That also means that this n is new plus now. Okay, so n is new plus now. Okay, similarly, p is new negative now. And according to our definition, uh, we know that uh, these two sets are mutually singular. So, because we found such a set, uh, P and uh, P complement, or N and N complement, such that the only uh, mu plus and mu minus, they leave on one of them, uh, and don't, they don't interfere each other. 
So that means these two are perpendicular or they are mutually singular. All right. And uh, as we just mentioned, we found such a pair mu plus and mu minus such that they satisfy this. And uh, it's also easy to verify that this mu is just uh, the difference of these two is because uh, for any new of E, we know that is new of E intersection of E plus uh, E and P plus the new of E and the N because the P and the N they are uh, they are disjoint union of X, okay? And this part is essentially just the new plus of E, and this part is negative new minus of E, so that's why this is also true. Right, so we have both of them true, but now the only question left is that we uh, decided such we chose this uh, decomposition, new plus new minus, uh, according to this Han decomposition. What if we have another part of Han decomposition and we get another uh, choice? Then we will see that this uh, essentially we are trying to show that it doesn't change. The new new and new plus and new minus will not change. So they are kind of unique. Okay, so let's say x is a decomposition of p plus p prime and n prime. It is another Han decomposition. And for this decomposition, we can have mu plus and mu minus defined similarly. That means for each, you just follow the same uh, definition for this mu plus and mu minus. So we're going to do this. So we'll just have mu here, uh, sorry, just have the mu here, and but we have the prime here. Okay, that's the definition for mu plus, similar for mu minus. And we're going to show that this mu plus is just the new plus. The same matter. All right. So now we note that p symmetric difference between p and p prime is uh, new not. Right. This is the uh, property we know from the Han decomposition theorem. This is new not. That means uh, for any subset of this set. Uh, the you apply new to it, you get zero. Okay. So we know that for any set E, the new plus of E, according to our definition, it will be mu of e p prime. Okay, I'm going to claim that this is just equal to the new of e p. And on the right hand side, the right hand side is equal to the new plus of e according to our definition of new plus. The question is, is, is why this is true. Okay, and now let's see if this is a p, this is the p prime, uh, and this is e. So this set here is supposed to be this part, right? And this part here is this part. So I want to show you this two have the same measure. We just need to show that this part and this part, they have the same measure. Okay, because this is a common area. Okay, to show this and this uh, have the same or these two have the, the measure zero, because if they are measure zero, then the measure of uh, this part will be equal to the measure of this part. Okay, to show these two have uh, measure zero, we just need to check. The symmetric difference between the two is this and this part, right? And we know that this is new now, means that any subset of it will we take the new, we apply new, or we use the measure new to measure any subset of this, uh, this 
uh, blue area, the measure will be zero. So apparently this part is a subset. So the measure of this, the new applied to this part will be zero. And similarly apply new to this part, it will be zero as well. And that's why this is actually uh, checked. Okay, this is actually true. Okay, and that shows that for any measurable set E, we know when you subset the E, we know that the mu plus will take exactly the same value as the mu plus, and that just means these two measures are identical. And similarly, we can show that the mu minus is identical to nu minus. And this shows that the decomposition we found here are actually they are actually uh, unique. There's a unique way to decompose a sign measure. Okay, so I will not complete the, the sentence, but the, you know the you know the idea. All right, I'll give you a definition for uh, total variation of a uh, sign measure. So it's just like if we have uh, f equals to f plus minus f minus, then uh, we know this is equal to the f plus plus f minus. And uh, the total variation is similar here. We say that the, we denote this total variation of the sign measure nu by this. That this is called total variation of the sign measure new. Okay. Um, so what this act exactly means is that you can treat this total variation of nu as a matter, and it's actually a positive net matter. And if uh, you want to use it to uh, evaluate the matter at any set, we know this is just equal to the nu plus of e plus nu minus of e. Okay, this is what we mean. Or due to the def definition of nu plus nu minus, according to the uh, Jordan decomposition theorem, this is just the new of the intersection of these two plus the new of the sorry the minus new of the intersection of these two. Okay, because on this part this this value is negative or is the non is non positive. Okay, this is true for any e. Okay, this is total variation, and then we can also define the uh, integrability with respect to a sign measure. So previously we have the integrability of, of uh, with, respect, with respect to a Lebesgue measure, which means that the f is measurable if uh, let's say it's L is measurable, or it's, sorry, it's integrable if uh, this mu is finite. It's finite, right? And actually, it's plus or minus, they're both finite. Right now, uh, we say, we say uh, function f is new integrable, where this new is a sign measure, then we, what do we mean is that let me show what it is. We say f is integrable with respect to the sign measure sign measure. New if uh, both this or I should say if F is integrable with respect to both 
new plus and a new minus. Okay, and in this case, the integration of f with respect to the new is is defined as for any set e, apparently for any set e is defined as it's d mu plus minus d f d mu minus. Okay, because this uh, f is integrable with respect to both these two. So we know this is a finite number, this is also a finite number. Actually, even if you take the absolute value, it's still a finite number. Okay, and you're taking difference, we're taking difference of the two finite numbers. Uh, so everything makes sense. So everything is finite. Okay, so that's the definition for uh, for this. Okay, next, uh, we're going to discuss an important uh, result for regarding the sign the measure. A sign the measure is called the Rodin. Nicotine theorem. Okay. To do that, we first uh, give a few definition, uh, a few easy results. And after that, we're going to prove the Radon nicotine theorem. Okay. Okay. First, we're going to define the absolute continuity. So we have uh, discussed the absolute continuity for integrals. We say that f is integrable means that for any epsilon, there exists a delta such that if you have a set E, if you have a set E with mu uh, E less than delta, then the integral of f over E will be less than epsilon. Right, this is the called absolute absolute continuity uh, with respect to the matter. Uh, this is the absolute continuity about integrals. And now we also have absolute continuity with respect to a matter. Uh, since we have a signed matter, we can discuss its uh, uh, this continuity with respect to another positive matter. So we say a signed matter. U is absolutely continuous with respect to a positive measure. U. And we denote this by this. Uh, it's like a greatly, greatly less than uh, mu. Okay. If mu e is zero, implies that mu e is zero. In this case, we see that the uh, measure new is absolutely continuous with respect to the measure mu. Okay. Um, and apparently, you can see that if we have this, then uh, Actually, this will be also true because uh, this will be also true. The reason is we can just pick up the new plus. We can just take uh, pay, take this as e complement with p, and this will be e. Uh, uh, sorry, the intersection of e and p to replace this one, and then this will be just equal to the new plus of e. Okay, um, and if new is on, is zero on e, then the new will be also zero on e. Compli uh, the com com uh, intersection of e and p, so this is a subset of v. Okay, remember that new is positive measure, so it's just like the bigger measure we had earlier. Okay, you will have this property. And similarly, we can show that this will be 
we also also imply that this is less than or equal to mu, or this is an absolute continuous with respect to mu, right? And uh, these two both are uh, absolute continuous with respect to mu, implies that the total variation of mu is uh, continuous with respect to the positive measure mu. Okay, so this is pretty easy to show. Okay, next I want to show a, a easy result. If uh, we know two, the measure nu is uh, uh, mutually singular with respect to the mu, and uh, nu is also absolutely continuous with respect to nu. So this this is sign the matter, uh, and this is a positive matter. Then we can claim that this nu is just zero. Okay, it takes the value of zero for any set. Okay, so the proof is pretty simple uh, because we have these two are mutually singular. So I know that there exists a set E such that E is nu now and uh, E complement is new now. Okay. Um, but so now we can see that if there's something happens, if there are if there is any non-negative value of new, it cannot happen on E because this is already new now. So it can only happen on here, but on here this is new now, and uh, uh, new is absolutely continuous with respect to that. So that will push this to uh, to be now as well, and that means the this matter new will be both now on here and on here, and that means new is just now on the whole set. Okay, and uh, that will also imply that new is just a it's just zero. That's pretty easy to show. Now we're going to show that uh, if mu is a sign measure, and uh, mu is a positive measure. Then we have, uh, we can show that a, a sufficient and necessary condition for new to be absolutely continuous with respect to mu is that for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta such that uh, the measure of E is less than delta implies the uh, measure of E is less than epsilon. Okay. So to prove this, uh, remember that this is true even only if the total variation of this is uh, also absolutely continuous with respect to new. So we just in this case we just need to show uh, the case where new is is total variation or mu is a positive measure. Okay, we just need to show that mu is a positive measure for this. It will be enough. Okay, um, so without loss of generality, assume mu is positive. Okay, and this is because and only if 
um, this is less than that. And also, we know that for any set, the measure of this is less than or equal to the total variation divided by the e. Okay, that's why we can easily, uh, we can just consider the case where mu is positive. Okay, this is positive, so we, we first show this direction. And this direction is pretty easy to show. Uh, the reason is, say we just need to show that uh, there's a set E and uh, the measure of E is zero. I just need to show that, uh, I just want to show that this is also zero. Okay, the question is if this is true. Okay, because this is true, I know that, so for example, we can let epsilon k to be or k. Then uh, uh, there exists delta k such that the mu of E is less than delta k. And this from the, uh, the condition, we know that this implies that the new of E will be also less than epsilon k, which is equal to one over k. Okay, but this is since this is equal to zero, this must be true for any k, and this just means that the new of k will be less than uh, any one over k. On the on one side is bigger than equal to zero, on the other side is less than one over k for any k. So the only choice for this new e, the only possible value for this new e is equal to zero new e must be zero. Okay, so that finished the one direction, the uh, sufficiency. Now let's show the necessity. So the necessity means that, uh, suppose we know uh, suppose we know that new is absolutely continuous with the rest, but new, we want to show this. Uh, let's prove this by contradiction, if not, then there exists epsilon zero, epsilon not greater than zero, such that for any delta k, I'm going to set this delta k to be one over uh, one over two to the k. There exists some e k such that there is some e k where is Nu of e k is less than delta k, which is equal to one over two to the k. But this nu of e k is always greater than or equal to epsilon naught. So this is like to reverse this notation. Uh, this reverse this statement. Okay. Now we consider this uh, the upper limit of this sequence of sets e k. So let's say let f k to be the union of ej's for j greater than or equal to k. And uh, we, we're going to let f to be the intersection. This is just like what we did at the beginning of this semester. This is our upper limit of the case. Right, so this is the upper limit of e k. Okay, so remember that this f k is in, uh, is decreasing sequence. This is decreasing, right? Since the, the for larger k will take a fewer set to to take uh, will take a union of fewer sets. <clears throat> so it's uh, decreasing, but uh, we know that for e. For the f1, this is equal to the mu of the intersection, uh, the union of all the ej's for j from 1 to plus infinity, and uh, according to the, uh, and we know that this is less than or equal to the measure of those sets. And remember, each one of them is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the j, so it's less than or equal to 
is less than sum of 1 over 2 to the j for j from 1 to infinity. So this is equal to 1. And that means the mu f1 is equal to 1. And that's why we can actually exchange the measure and the, the, uh, the limit. So the, the mu of f is just the mu of the limit of fk. Right? According to our definition of f, this is just the intersection of this, this will be equal to fk. So this intersect since fk is uh, decreasing, so the intersection of those fk is just the, the limit. Now we know this is equal to the limit of mu of fk. Okay, and now we can see what is the measure of fk. This is equal to mu of the union of ek or ej where j is from k to plus infinity but I know that this is less than equal to the limit doesn't change inside that it's less than equal to k from 1 so j from k to plus infinity of new ej but this one is less than or 2 to the j so that everything together will be less than or equal to the limit of the sum of 1 over 2 to the j, sorry, 1 over 2 to the k, uh, and, and sorry, should be j here. But since I know that this over 2j is equal to 2k minus 1, 1 over 2, two 1 over 2 to the k minus 1. So that's why this is equal, less than equal to this. For k going to infinity, I know this is just equal to 0. Okay, so that just means that is equal to 0. Okay, and since we know that the new is absolutely continuous with respect to mu, this equal to 0 means that the new of this should, new of f should be 0 as well. But we can see that the new of f is equal to the new of the uh, the limit of f k, right? It's equal to new of. Uh, I should say this. Let me let me say in this way. The new of f k is equal to new of the union of e j j from 1 to j from k to plus infinity so because the new is we assume it's uh, uh, not positive so this means that it's bigger than equal to the new of e k but this is bigger than equal to epsilon 0 okay so that means for each f for each k the new of fk is bigger than equal to uh, epsilon 0 so we take the limits is never going to be less than New of zero. So this means that implies that the new of f is also greater than or equal to f from zero. And this is a contradiction which contradicts to this fact. Okay, we found some set f such that this is equal to zero. But this uh, this is greater than zero. Okay. Now uh, we need to nail down the last result before the Radon equation theorem. Suppose we have two. Let's consider simply the case. Suppose we have two finite positive measures. Then we can show that either the two are mutually singular or there exists there exists a epsilon 
and they set E where the, the new of E is positive such that this minus new uh, say E is not just positive but it's also since right now the new minus uh, epsilon times mu will be a centimeter not necessarily positive but the, on this E it is positive so these uh, minus epsilon new positive okay so either of these two happens Okay, so to show this, consider this uh, mu minus one over k times mu. So this is the so this is a sign measure because mu and the mu are both uh, positive measures. But if we take the difference of them, it could be a sign sign measure. And we consider for each k, we consider the hand decomposition. pk and uh, nk so we could decompose the x to be pk and nk where the pk and k do not overlap okay and then we let pk sorry p to be the union of those pk's and n to be the intersection of those nk's then apparently p and n are also complement to each other they are also uh, x is still equal to p union with n and the p intersection of p and n will be still empty okay, so that's pretty easy to show and now let's consider the n first uh, because n is a subset of every nk and uh, this since n is a subset of every nk and uh, nk is mu minus 1 over k mu negative we know when we apply this to the set n, we'll get a negative number, or it will be less than or equal to zero. And that also means that nu of n will be less than or equal to one over k times nu of n. Okay, and this is true for every k. But remember that the, both of these two measures are finite. We're assuming that both of them are finite. So that means the number what the, this n is, this must be a finite number. And uh, this is a divided by k, so it's getting clo closer to zero. On the other hand, it's a, it's a positive measure. On the other hand, it's a greater than equal to zero. So this means that the new n is zero. And it is zero means that the uh, n is and is new now. Okay, because new is a positive matter. So if uh, you take some set, you get zero, then any subset of n, you still get zero. Okay, so it is new now. Okay, so now we finished for the n, and then we consider the other part. We still have the p left. So if p is uh, mu now, Then we're done because we found we found that the p uh, we found that these two measures are uh, mutually similar to each other, right? Then we're done. Uh, if this p is not new now, then that means the new of p must be positive. Again, this is because the mu is a positive measure. 
So it's either zero uh, or if it's not now on the on the set P, then that means that the measure of P must be positive, right? Otherwise, uh, if it's equal to zero, then that just means that it's, it's the P is nil now. Okay, then this is, must be equal to zero. So uh, remember that the P is the union of those PKs. So it's the union of the PK. And so this is less than or equal to the sum of these PKs. The sum of this is greater than zero means that at least one of them is positive. And also, uh, because this PK was chosen to be the uh, positive set of the uh, Hung decomposition of mu minus one over k times nu, we know that uh, this is, we'll say, we'll say that the PK is this positive. And uh, we can just take the set, this PK to be the set E. This will be the E we needed here. And then this should be just one of K. This will be just the PK. Okay, then everything, uh, then we got this one. So either we can show that these two are mutually singular or we can find some epsilon such that uh, nu minus epsilon times mu is a uh, the subset E here is mu minus uh, absolute mu positive. Okay, that's the that's the claim we just made. Okay, now finally we're ready to prove the uh, Radon Nicotine theorem. So the Radon Nicotine theorem says that. Suppose we have a signed measure. Uh, suppose, sorry, suppose new is a sigma finite signed measure. Okay, you still remember sigma finite means that uh, the new itself may be infinite, but we can partition the set X into a countable. countable uh, union of sets and on each of those sets uh, the new is finite. Okay? It's a finite sign, it's a sigma finite sign measure and uh, new is a sigma finite measure, positive measure, or just measure as we said. Just means when we say measure it just means a positive measure. Okay? For example new is a lot bigger measure. Then uh, we can decompose this new to uh, two measures, one is uh, mutually singular with respect to mu, and uh, the other one is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. Okay. And there exists unique uh, sigma finite measures. The sigma finite sign measures. Lambda and then rho such that um, lambda is uh, mutually singular with respect to. Uh, mu and uh, rho is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. And the mu is just the sum of the two. Okay. So let's see how to prove this. So this tells us that if we have a sign, uh, let's say sigma finite measure mu, and then we have a sign measure here, then we can decompose this, this into two parts. One part is uh, absolutely continuous with respect to mu, and the other part is 
uh, mutually similar when they're spreading it. Right? That's our purpose. And that's what the theorem claims. Uh, we first consider the simplest case where uh, both these two, both of these two measures are finite and positive. Okay. So the first step is uh, we consider the case where both of these are finite positive. Okay. Uh, new is already positive. So we just need to be finite. But for for new, it is uh, it's a sign matter. It, it is not a sign matter. It's just actually a positive matter, and also sigma, also the finite. So let's just consider this case uh, for simplicity, and then we will easily extend this to the general case. So the key is that we want to define a family of functions for f. This set of functions uh, is includes all the functions that are uh, non-active say non-active you could take a positive infinity value but it wouldn't be uh, you know that that would not happen it only happen on a uh, major zero set because I want this f to be the set of fun functions such that the integral of this f is less than new of e for any measurable set E. Okay, and we just define all the functions f such that their uh, integral is going to be bounded by bounded by this uh, measure of E using this using this measure new. All right, so we're going to see, for example, if this f is a constant zero, if f is zero. Then we know that this definitely is true for any e, right? So that means this f at least it contains the zero function. So it's a non-empty uh, set, a non-empty collection of functions. And then we also just need a one more fact. We're going to claim that if f, g, they are both in f, then the maximum of them is also in f. The maximum of them is for every point you take the uh, larger value for any point x you take the larger value of f x and g x, and that will be a new function. The, which is good, going to show that uh, this new function is also in f. Okay, so to prove this, prove of the claim, we just need to realize that, uh, say for a to be the set of functions, a uh, set of points where f is greater than or equal to g then we can see that we just need to show that the integral for any set e the integral of the maximum of these two functions remember this is the function right this is a function i know that i can separate this this is still measurable so i can map separate these two, two parts uh, one is with e a, the other one is on the E, A complement. But on A, we know that F is bigger than or equal to G, so the maximum of them should be equal to just F. And on the other side, on A complement, this should be equal to G. Okay, and I know that for each of them, uh, the first one is less than or equal to new of e. This because f is uh, in the family, and also g is in the family. That means the integral, second integral, will be also less than or equal to this, and this is equal to new of e. And that means the maximum of for any set e, we show that the integral of this max of this function. It's less than or equal to that, and that just means this is also in F. Okay, so that's the com complete uh, completion of the claim proof for the claim. Okay, now we have uh, this property. Then we're going to 
uh, consider the supremum of those integrals we can get from the family. So let m to be the supremum of uh, the integral of f, d mu, where this f is in the family. Okay, we're going to see what uh, integral I can get, largest integral value I can get. And I'm going to, I know this is going to be less than or equal to, because for each one of this, I know this is less than equal to the nu of x. But I said that the nu is a finite measure, so that means this is less than uh, infinity. Okay, so it's a finite number. And each one of them is less than equal to this number. So take the supremum is still less than equal to the, less than equal to this. It's finite. So I know that m is a finite number. And because it's a supremum, we know that there exists a sequence of functions f k uh, that are in this family f, such that the integral of f k d nu is going to converge to m, okay, as k goes to infinity. Okay, now we just let. Uh, we're going to show that we can actually reach to this m for some function. So to we want to show there exists a function f in this family whose integral is actually equal to this m. Okay, to show that, just let the gk to be the uh, uh, maximum value of this f1 through fk. So it's fi of for i from 1 to k. So I know that I take the maximum of two functions, uh, I'm still in the family f. So we take the, the maximum of finite many of them, it will be still in f. Okay, so this means that this is still in f. And we're going to take uh, the limit function f to be the supremum of the fk. Because there are infinite many k's, so I can only take the supremum. Now I'm not sure if this f is in the family or not, because I'm taking the uh, supremum of this infinite many of them. But I'm going to show that this, this f will be still in the family. And to show that, we first notice that this gk is increasing to f, right? It's increasing to f, and uh, uh, we know that this will be still We know that this will this gk on the one hand is greater than or equal to fk because gk is the maximum of from f1 to fk. Okay. You know by the bipolar levy, we know that the integral of gk is going to convert to the integral of f uh, over x. Uh, but on the one hand, I know that this is equal to, or this is greater than or equal to the integral of fk. Okay, so now what we have is, have is that I have two sequences. One is this. And I know that it's going to convert to m. And I know that this is less than or equal to uh, integral of gk. And this is also, this is converging the integral of f. But on the other hand, I know that uh, the integral of f must be also less than equal to must be also less than equal to uh, this value. Also less than equal to this value, right? This is because every f k is has an integral less than equal to that, so the, all of them is still less than that. And that means this uh, this f is inside the family as well. Okay, so
this is also in your app and uh, the limit of GK in your GK will be equal to the integral of f and on the other hand it must be less than equal to f so the uh, the integral of f must be equal to f okay so with this f uh, this f is actually the will give us the uh, absolutely continuous part will give us this part okay and the, the rest or whatever the rest we can define it to be the, the lambda part okay so to show that uh, let's say define lambda e to be mu e minus the integral of f to mu for any e measurable e okay Now uh, we're going to show that then we claim this lambda must be neutrally uh, mutually singular with respect to mu. Okay? If not, then we know as we showed in the previous theorem, uh, we have two matters two final matters and uh, they, they are either uh, so I should say so this lambda must be greater than equal to zero because I know that this is, must be greater than equal to this and now I have two uh, matters lambda and mu and we know that they are uh, they are both finite and uh, um, we know that from the previous lemma, they are either mutually uh, singular or they, there exists some epsilon and some set E such that the matter of uh, mu on this set is greater than zero and uh, the set here itself is uh, mu is lambda minus epsilon times mu positive. Right now we say we claim that uh, it must take the first case. This must be true because other uh, because otherwise we'll get a conclusion. Uh, we'll get a contradiction if it takes the other case. Case. Okay, let's say that if not, then we know that uh, there exists a epsilon and a such that the matter of a is positive. And uh, the lambda minus epsilon mu is, and also a is this positive. So a is. Lambda minus epsilon mu positive. Okay, um, so we take this case and it will show that there will be a con uh, contradiction. And for the, to show the contradiction, we can see that, uh, for any set E, we want to show that F plus epsilon CA will be inside the family. And we're going to show that the integral of this will be bigger than m. So it's in the family, but its integral is bigger than m. That, that's, a that's a contradiction, because m is a supremum of the integrals uh, over the function in this family f. Right? That's where the conclusion, uh, the contradiction will come from. And to show this, let's first uh, check that it's actually in f. So to show it's in f, then we need to show that this 
must be less than or equal to the new of e. Okay, well, I want to show that this is eventually less than or equal to new of e. Okay, uh, so now let's look at this one. Separate this e to two parts. One is with e compli a complement, the other one is with a, a complement of f plus epsilon to a d nu plus e com uh, intersection of e and a f plus epsilon to a d nu. Okay, now the first part, uh, it's just to take the sum. The integral of the of f and then the integral of this and take the sum. But remember this, uh, this is a characteristic function of a, so we will take a value of zero over this set. So this part is just gone. So I have the integral of f d mu, the intersection of uh, this two sets, and then plus this part will be the integral of f for a plus the epsilon times the, because CA is uh, it's a constant one uh, over this set. So this is just a, a one over this set, that would be just a measure of this set. Okay, now uh, the first one is let, because F is in the family, so this means that this is less than equal to the new of E, a complement. And now let's look at the second, the last two. Uh, because the lambda minus mu e, the a is this positive, right? And so that means the lambda minus epsilon mu on e uh, on the set a will be a positive value. Okay, oh, sorry, it will be greater than equal to zero. It's positive, so at least it's greater than equal to zero. We don't know. Uh, Oh, I think that would be enough. And then this is equal to lambda of a minus mu e, uh, epsilon of mu a. The lambda of a is defined to be here. So that means it's mu of a uh, let me, I will take the other one. So I know it is A is mu positive. So uh, is this positive? So I know that a subset of A will have a value greater than or equal to zero. So this is equal to lambda of E intersection with A minus epsilon mu of E A. And according to the definition, the the first term is equal to new of E A minus the intersection of A F D mu. And that is, e, that's, that is uh, the first term, and the last term doesn't change. And this is greater than or equal to zero. And this means that the if we move this two to the left, then I know this is less than or equal to new of E intersection way, but that's exactly these two terms. So this, this is minus the this the sum of these two is which is exactly this term, and this is going to be less than or equal to that, right? When we move this to the left hand side. Okay, so that's why I have this is a. This sum of the second two last two terms will be less than or equal to this, and according to uh, because these two sets are disjoint, it will be just equal to the measure of e, and this implies that the f plus epsilon C a is uh, in f. Okay, it is in f. Okay, since it's in f, we know that. Uh, the integral of this should be greater, uh, should be less than or equal to m. But let's consider consider its integral. The integral of this is what? This is equal to 
f d mu plus epsilon mu a. And the first term is equal to m. You have epsilon times mu a. But the second term is positive, so it's greater than m. So we found that this is actually in f, but the integral of this is greater than m, which is the supremum of the integral. So that's the contradiction. So, which is a contradiction. Okay, and this implies that uh, this new uh, this lambda has to be mutually singular with respect to the new. Okay. Well, again, as before, uh, uh, we're going to show the uniqueness of this decomposition. So suppose it's another pair. Or, in other words, uh, we can say that the uh, uh, The new of E is also equal to lambda of E plus the integral of f d mu E, where uh, the lambda, so lambda prime, f prime, and prime is mutually singular with respect to mu, and apparently this f prime will be uh, giving us the rho prime, where so this is correspondence to rho prime, where for any set E, the rho prime is equal to the integral of f prime over E. Okay, so we can identif uh, identify f prime with the rho prime. Uh, and that's also the uh, the unit notation we use to, to denote this lambda. This lambda is often just denoted as uh, d mu minus df d mu. So this part is like the d rho part. Okay? And that this d lambda is just the difference or it's just the leftover when we take out rho from mu. Rho from mu. Okay? Uh, so that's... Suppose this is the case, we have another pair. Then we're going to show that this f prime will be just equal to the f, uh, which is the f we found before above, and that this lambda prime will be just the, the lambda as before. Okay, to show this, we can first see that this lambda prime, lambda, mi lambda minus lambda prime will be still mutually singular with, the, with respect to me. Okay? And uh, this is because uh, we know that the lambda is uh, mutually singular with respect to that, and also this is mutually singular with respect to mu. So for this, for example, we can find the e. For this, we can find the e prime such that the e is uh, new now. This is the new. This is new now. And the e complement is lambda now. Right, and similarly, this is mu now, and uh, this is uh, uh, the complement of this is lambda prime now. Right, that's what uh, that's what we can get, and then we take the for example, we take the intersection of these two, then this will be lambda, both lambda now and uh, lambda prime now. So it's also lambda. This now. That will be this now. And the, the union of these two will be still mu now. Because mu is now on both of them. And uh, now we find the decomposition such that the lambda minus lambda prime is uh, uh, it's a mutually singular with respect to mu. Okay, that's, uh, that's uh, how we can get this first one. And uh, we can also show that uh, this lambda 
according to our notation here, the notation here, the d lambda minus d lambda prime will be equal to the d mu minus d mu prime, or there will be also f d mu minus uh, prime d mu minus f d mu. Okay, and this is just uh, take the difference of these two. Well, apparently the right hand side is absolutely so this is still absolutely continuous or this is this right hand side is still absolutely continuous uh, function uh, accomplishes the matter of mu the reason is again you take the as we said this you can treat this as a matter and then the integral of this f prime plus f the mu uh, if this e uh, the matter of E is sufficiently small, this will be less than epsilon. Okay, full sentence is that for any epsilon, there exists delta such that uh, if this is, has a matter mu of E is less than delta, then this one will be less than epsilon, right? This is because the, both of these are integrable with no respect to mu. Okay, so this part will be the, uh, will be mu, will be uh, absolutely continuous with respect to, to the mu. So now we found that this lambda on the one hand, it is uh, mutually singular with respect to mu. On the other hand, we know that this lambda minus lambda prime is absolutely continued with respect to mu because this, because of this, because of this. Okay, so this is also true. So together with, we call this one, and two. So the one plus two implies that the lambda minus lambda prime should be just equal to zero. Okay, it is uh, mutually singular with respect to mu, and it's also absolute value, absolutely continuous with respect to to mu. So that's that's why this must be equal to zero. And this is equal to zero just means that the mu uh, f prime is equal to f almost everywhere in mu. Okay, so these two are almost uh, so because this is uh, this will be uh, almost uh, this will be zero almost everywhere. That just means these two functions are almost everywhere. So that means these two are actually equal, and these two are actually equal. So that that's why this decomposition is actually unique. Okay, this 